Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-3017. Item Number, SCP-3017 Object Class, Euclid Neutralized Special Containment Procedures, Updated, Fraser Melbrook's cremated remains have been scattered over locations, all of which are under automated surveillance. The locations are stored in individual files under separate subdirectories under level clearance. Any attempt to access any of the files pertaining to the location of the remains, intentionally or otherwise, will automatically alert RISA administrators. All personnel attempting to access these files are to be administered Class A amnestics and removed from active duty for a period of no less than two weeks. If symptoms of SCP-3017-8 appear in any Foundation personnel and persist following administration of Class A amnestics, SCP-3017 will be redesignated as Euclid, new procedures will be drafted, and all affected personnel will be given further amnestic therapy on a case-by-case -case basis. Symptoms of exposure may include repeated or prolonged access to this file and related files, attempting to access files pertaining to the location of Melbrook's remains, attempting to access the remains themselves, creation of additional material related to SCP-3017, and any attempt to violate these containment procedures. Archive Special Containment Procedures, void as of January 1, 2027. Special Containment Procedures SCP-3017 is contained in a standard humanoid containment cell at Area 55. The entrance to the cell is to be guarded at all times by no fewer than three armed security personnel. Visual and audio feeds of the inside of the cell are to be monitored at all times by no fewer than three security personnel. Any malfunctioning cameras or microphones must be repaired without delay. Personnel interacting with SCP-3017 are not to do so continuously for more than one hour without Level 4 approval. Any personnel exhibiting violent or obsessive behavior towards SCP-3017 are to be administered a Class A amnestic. SCP-3017-1 instances are to remain under surveillance by clandestine assets. Any attempts by SCP-3017-1 to raise awareness of SCP-3017's containment, or of the containment of other SCP-3017-1 instances, shall be dealt with via standard information suppression techniques to prevent any security breach. Individual instances may be contained for the purposes of extracting information from SCP-3017, or to discourage lack of cooperation. No additional privileges are to be given to SCP-3017 for good behavior. Lack of cooperation by SCP-3017 may be dealt with by withholding of rations for no more than 24 hours, removal of basic amenities, sleep deprivation, corporal punishment, containment of SCP-3017-1 instances, and threat of harm of SCP-3017-1 instances. Description Void as of January 1, 2027. SCP-3017 is Fraser Melbrook, a male aged 25 years old at the time of initial containment. SCP-3017 is believed to have extensive ties to several anomalous groups, and is suspected of having committed multiple robberies, assaults, and murders. SCP-3017 has been arrested 23 times but has never been formally indicted, most likely due to its secondary effect. SCP-3017's primary anomaly affects all subjects coming in close proximity. Subjects who make direct visual contact or engage in conversation with SCP-3017 have a 1-5% chance per minute of becoming spontaneously aware of SCP-3017's criminal disposition. Subjects do not gain knowledge of SCP-3017's specific crimes, only a general understanding of its violent nature. 
Subjects exposed to SCP-3017 for periods greater than one hour may begin to experience a compulsion to ensure SCP-3017 remains incarcerated. Further exposure can result in obsessive or violent behavior, though this is easily remedied with amnestic treatment. SCP-3017 Secondary Anomaly Manifests in its Ability to Evade Extended Incarceration This effect is believed to be voluntary, but the exact mechanism for the phenomenon is unknown. SCP-3017 Secondary Anomaly has been a severe barrier to containment, but can be mitigated with the use of SCP-3017-1. SCP-3017-1 is the collective designation for 12, 13, 14 people who are entirely immune from SCP-3017's primary effect, and are unable to be convinced of SCP-3017's criminal activity. A table of all currently known SCP-3017-1 instances can be found under Addendum 3017-1-A. The Threat of Incarceration, Harm or death of SCP-3017-1 instances greatly reduces the effects of SCP-3017 secondary anomaly. The use of SCP-3017-1 for this purpose has been shown to be far more effective than conventional disciplinary action, and serves the dual function of being an incentive for SCP-3017 to divulge sensitive information. However, Conventional means are generally preferred due to logistical constraints. The use of SCP-3017-1 is the preferred method for obtaining information from SCP-3017. Addendum 3017-1A The following is a list of known SCP-3017-1 instances in their relation to SCP-3017. Designation Name Age Relation to SCP-3017 SCP-3017-1-01 Vivian Melbrook 42 and 48 Mother SCP-3017-1-02 Beck Melbrook Sr. 49 Father SCP-3017-1-03 Zara Melbrook 18 Sister SCP-3017-1-04 Beck Melbrook Jr. 16 Brother SCP-3017-1-05 Max Melbrook 11 Brother SCP-3017-1-06 Tabitha 42 and 78 Maternal Grandmother SCP-3017-1-07 Nadia Alvin 24 Fiancé SCP-3017-1-08 Eugene Stein 26 Former Classmate SCP-3017-1-09 Anna Meyer 25 Former Classmate SCP-3017-1-10 Victor Abbott 27 Former Romantic Partner SCP-3017-1-11 Max Friedrich 35 Neighbor SCP-3017-1-12 Caitlin Adelardi 22 Former Romantic Partner Addendum, Mitigation of SCP-3017 Secondary Effect Following repeated attempts at containment breach by SCP-3017, Dr. Paris Kieran and researcher Kathleen Ryland began an investigation of subjects' previous incarcerations. It was discovered that shortly prior to SCP-3017's 22nd arrest and longest period of police incarceration, SCP-3017-1-04 was diagnosed with leukemia. A proposal was approved to investigate how SCP-3017's perception of SCP-3017-1's well-being could be used to mitigate its secondary effect. The following interview was conducted by researcher Ryland on January 29, 2026. Begin log. Good afternoon, SCP-3017. How are you feeling? I feel like the time Beck caught me in the eye when we were playing catch. So, you've been giving the guards a hard time lately? No, I haven't. Look, if this is about the other day... I already told you that I didn't do anything. You were trying to escape. I was walking to the bathroom, and he tackled me. I would have done the same if you were trying to attack me. 
I barely even looked at him. Are we seriously getting into this again? You know what? You're right. Dr. Kieran already went through this with you. Yeah, I've had enough of her to last me a lifetime. Laughs, haven't we all? Geez. Um, well, you mentioned your brother just a moment ago. He finished his treatment just this past June, right? Yeah. He did. Why? Did. Did something happen to Beck? No, no. Not as far as we know. Then what are you getting at? Well, we've received word that your grandmother has been diagnosed with lung cancer. What? She went to a clinic about... Yeah, I heard you. I understand that you're upset, but we... Yes, I am upset. I'm goddamn upset. I'm upset that you guys are keeping me here when something like this happens. I need to be there for her. I need to be there for my family. I'm sorry, but we can't let you go. You need to understand this. No, you need to understand. Stop. This is important and I need you to listen, okay? Size, fine. Right now, the doctors think they can treat it. If all goes well she'll be fine. But in order for that to happen, we need you to cooperate. What do you mean? What I mean is, look, it wasn't my decision, but if you keep trying to pull all the stuff with the guards, we won't let her get treatment. But... But that that's crazy. You can't do that. It wasn't my call, I'm sorry. No, you can't do this. This is just what they decided to do, and I can't change that. I get it, you're upset and you're worried. But right now, the best thing you can do for her is cooperate with us, all right? But I can't just stay here. I need to be with her. You can't right now. I'm sorry. I know you care about her. But if you want to help her, you have to stop all these escape attempts. I, can you at least keep me updated on how she's doing? I'll try. All right then. I'll do what you want. End log. SCP-3017 has not attempted to breach containment in the four months following this recommendation. Currently. Monitoring of SCP-3017-1-06 has shown no major chronic health problems. Addendum, Memorandum, February 19, 2026. Given SCP-3017's known and suspected ties to anomalous groups, the subject is a potential goldmine of information. Thus far, however, all conventional methods of interrogation have failed to yield any useful intelligence. With so much valuable intelligence to be obtained, we must look into alternative means of getting the subject to divulge the information we need. SCP-3017's secondary effect has been shown to be mitigated by the belief that SCP-3017-1 instances are in some form of danger. The secondary effect is voluntary on SCP-3017's part. It is mitigated when SCP-3017 does not want to escape or is more concerned with other matters. Thus, its concern for those it considers close outweighs its desire to escape. Our psychological evaluation of SCP-3017 highlights this attribute as a dominant part of its personality. The possible application here is obvious. SCP-3017-1 may be just the incentive we need to finally extract the information we need. By containing individual instances of SCP-3017-1, and convincing SCP-3017 that they are in danger, I believe the subject will be far more cooperative. SCP-3017-1 are classified as anomalous, and as such it is within our jurisdiction to contain them if need be. I propose that we contain individual instances on a temporary basis as needed, and then administer an amnestic and release them. At the expense of few resources, we may soon have access to large amounts of intelligence. Dr. Karen Proposal approved by Area 55 Director 
2021-26. Interview in 3017-13. On March 13, 2028, 6, SCP-3017-1-07 was placed into containment at Area 55 in order to evaluate the efficacy of using SCP-3017-1 instances to gather intelligence from SCP-3017. The following interview was conducted by Dr. Karen while SCP-3017-1-07 was contained on site. Begin Log SCP-3017, do you believe you are ready to cooperate with us and provide us with the information we have been requesting regarding, Redacted? For the love of God, I keep telling you that I don't know what that is. Very well. In that case, please look at this screen and tell me what you see. SCP-3017 looks at the screen of Dr. Kieran's computer which displays the live feed of SCP-3017-1-07's containment cell. Subject displays shock. Why the hell are you showing me this? Answer my question, SCP-3017. What do you see on the screen? I see that you sick fucks are trying to make me think my girlfriend's been kidnapped. You're a real piece of work. SCP-3017-1-07 has been detained and placed into our custody. Now. Subject stands up and slams its hands on the table. Why? My brother and my grandma might both be dying, and you're just going to keep me here and kidnap Nadia? You're all goddamn psychos. Sit down or I will have the guards remove you back to your cell. Subject sits back down. That's better. Now, you have refused to provide the information we've been requesting over the course of your containment. We need that information, and we need it now. That is why we have decided to see if you would be more cooperative with a new incentive. You can't do this to her, she hasn't done anything. Please, I swear to God, she'll go insane in here, she'll die. I can't let you do this. If you give us what we want. Then SCP-3017-1-7. She has a name. Are you really that? If you give us the information we need, she will not be harmed. She will be released from our custody and sent home with no memory of this. But, I already said I don't know anything. How can I tell you what I don't fucking know? We both know that isn't true. To hell it isn't. Besides, how do you expect me to trust you to let her go? You've been keeping me here for God knows how long, and for what? Zilch. And now you want to do the same to her? How do I know that you won't? SCP-3017, do you want to find out what will happen to her if you continue to be uncooperative? SCP-3017 covers its face with its hands and is silent for several seconds before responding. I'll. I guess I'll try to tell you something. I don't know much about it, but I'll try. Subsequent dialogue classified. End log. Extensive information regarding several groups, particularly redacted, was obtained during this interview. SCP-3017-1-07 was subsequent amnesticized and released. Addendum. Memorandum. March 20th, 2026. In the course of looking over the information provided by SCP-3017 during the interview on 03-13-28-6, I have found a great deal of inconsistency. In particular, redacted really doesn't make sense when considering redacted. Furthermore, much of his story doesn't match up at all from information we have obtained from both field agents and from members of redacted. I seriously doubt that SCP-3017's information can be considered reliable. I don't know if it just doesn't know anything, or if it's still determined to keep information away from us. But I suspect the latter right now. Researcher Rylan Interview in 3017-24 By April 16, 2028, 6, SCP-3017-1-05 08, minus 10, and minus 12 had all been detained as further incentive for SCP-3017's cooperation. 
on April 16, 2028. 6. Dr. Kieran was given special clearance to conduct the following interview. Prior to the interview, SCP-3017-1-10 was sedated and removed to a separate cell. Interview was conducted with SCP-3017 in the adjacent observation room. Begin log. Okay, and let's start. SCP-3017, I'm going to show you an object, and then I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think it is. Fine, let's get this over with. Dr. Karen places a spent hollow point bullet on the table. I have no idea what that is. All right. Now, I'm going to show you another object, and I want you to do the same thing. Dr. Karen places an unspent hollow point bullet on the table, followed by several seconds of silence. That's a bullet. Very good. Now, do you have a better idea as to what the first object was? It's a bullet too then. Is it? I, I don't know. Yes, it's a bullet. Why do you think it's shaped like that? Several seconds of silence. Okay, how about I tell you then? These are hollow points. The reason that bullet is shaped like that is because it was fired through something. Dr. Kieran rises from her chair and activates the lights in the adjacent cell. And in that room is what I fired it through. Take a look. Unintelligible. What was that? SCP-3017 stands up. I'll kill you, you fucking bastard. Dr. Karen quickly produces a pistol and aims it at SCP-3017. Several seconds of silence. Sit back down. Now. SCP-3017 sits back down, is now breathing heavily. This is what happens when you lie to us. Please. The more you lie, the worse this is going to get for you. Now, are you going to give us the information we need, or not? I don't know anything. I'm sorry. Please. That's bullshit, and we both know it. Are you going to shoot me or not? Dr. Kieran fires the pistol at the acrylic glass observation window. We're sick of your games. Start telling the truth or I will shoot him again. I can't. Why would you, oh God? SCP-3017 begins crying for several minutes. Interview terminated. End log. SCP-3017-1-10 and SCP-3017 were uninjured and returned to containment. Addendum 3017-1G-35A on April 29, 2028, 6, Researcher Ryland submitted the following proposal to Area 55 Director. Level 3 Clearance Required After looking further into our documentation, I've been shocked to see that practically no concrete evidence of SCP-3017's criminal history, anomalous or otherwise, actually exists. I can find no physical evidence no photographic evidence, and no video or audio recordings. All that we have is witness testimony, but given SCP-3017's mind-affecting properties, I do not believe any of this can be considered valid. I am becoming more and more convinced that my earlier conclusion regarding SCP-3017 was wrong. I think it honestly does not know the information that we've been asking, and has been making up information so as to protect SCP-3017-1. Not only do I believe further efforts to gain information for SCP-3017 are useless, I am also convinced that our current attempts may be a violation of ethics protocols. Right now, SCP-3017 is still convinced that its grandmother has cancer, and that we shot its ex-boyfriend dead right in front of it. On that note, how were Dr. Kieran's actions from two weeks ago not grounds for a reassignment at the very least? I am formally requesting that all SCP-3017-1 instances be released until we can do more thorough investigation. This has gone too far.
At the recommendation of Dr. Karen, researcher Rylan has been redesignated SCP-3017-1-13 and placed under containment. Incident I-3017-05-17-20 6. On May 17, 2028, 6, SCP-3017-1-13 escaped from her cell with the assistance of Security Officer Rudolf Karadad. SCP-3017-1-13 proceeded to manually trigger Area 55's breach alarm, while Security Officer Karadad directed security officers stationed at SCP-3017 cell to seek shelter elsewhere in the facility. SCP-3017-1-13 then proceeded to enter SCP-3017 cell and assist the subject in escaping containment. Security personnel were unable to apprehend SCP-3017 or SCP-3017-1-13, and both are believed to have escaped the facility. Security Officer Karadad was redesignated SCP-3017-1-14 and placed under containment. Dr. Kieran was reported missing following this event, but reappeared at Area 55 on May 25, 2026. Incident I-3017-1N On May 23, 2028, 6, at approximately 0300 local time, a fire began at SCP-3017's previous residence. The fire quickly spread in destroying the residence and two adjacent houses. SCP-3017-1-01-07 and minus 11 perished in the fire, along with two civilians. The cause of the fire is under investigation was found to be arson. Incident I-3017-X SCP-3017 was found dead on May 24, 2028. 6. Subject is believed to have jumped from a bridge approximately one kilometer from its previous residence. SCP-3017-1-13 was recovered nearby and recontained without resistance. The following interview was conducted with SCP-3017-1-13 by Dr. Kieran two days later. Begin log. All right, you're aware of all the procedure here, so I'll just get right. Don't try to act like this is a normal thing, Paris. We both know it's not. If you're asking about the breach, Rudy will be able to fill you in on everything. He did all the work there. I'm not interested in the breach. I'm interested in what transpired with you and SCP-3017 after you managed to escape. We hitchhiked too, redacted, his house burned down, he jumped into traffic. I don't want to talk about this. We need specifics. Okay, fine. Specify what you want to know. All right. Tell us about when you arrived in, redacted. Well, we got to the outskirts at something like 3 or 4 in the morning. The fire had already started by then, because we could see the light of it. Fraser was leading the way, just getting more and more panicked and I realized that the fire was around where his house was. He broke into a sprint, and I lost him for a little bit, but I just followed the flames and I found him staring at a disaster area. While you were in the vicinity, did you see anyone suspicious, anyone at all? We only saw the firefighters. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm pretty damn sure. The house was nearly coming down when I got there, so if someone set the fire, they were probably long gone at that point. And, um, how was SCP-3017 acting at that point? What the hell do you expect? I went to try and hold him back because I thought he was going to try and go in, but it started collapsing and he just fell to his knees. I guess I think he knew it was too late at that point. He cried for so long and I just tried to get him away from the fire at that point. How long would you say you remained there? I have no clue. I managed to get him to go a little farther down the street, but after that he didn't move until the sun had come up. How was? How would you describe SCP-3017's behavior at that point? 
What do you think? Please just describe it for me. He was scared and just broken. I got him away from that street, and then he started muttering to himself I don't want to die, and I tried to tell him that he was safe but he was just so broken. I've never seen God, I've never seen anyone that that shattered. SCP-3017-1-13 pauses and wipes her face. Goddamn, I can't do this. It's all right. Can you continue? I, I took him to the motel a little bit close by and bought a room with some of the cash Rudy gave us. When he was calm enough, I left him there to see if I could get any info, see if anyone got out, but. God I wanted to lie to him, just tell him something that didn't hurt him, but they were. SCP-3017-1-13 covers her face with her hands. Kathy, do you want to take a break for now? We can. No. You're going to hear all of this right now. SCP-3017-1-13 breathes heavily for several seconds. You didn't see him, you didn't get to see any of it, but I did. He. I went to sleep that night, and when I woke up the next morning he was gone. He was already dead. Do you have any idea, any at all, as to why SCP-3017 decided to end its own life? Gee, I don't know. He spent five days trying to get back home and see his family, only to watch them die in a fire. Maybe that was the reason? Or maybe it was because he finally thought for a second that they were going to be okay, that for once they'd all have their lives back. Is that reason enough? Is it? SCP-3017-1-13 takes a deep breath. I'd told him. About all those things we lied to him about. I told him how long I'd been lying to him and he didn't care, he wasn't mad. He was so happy. He was so ready to see those people. He was just so happy, just wanted to live for them. He wanted to live so much. He didn't want to die. I... I see. He was so scared. He didn't want to die. I don't believe it for a second. End log. SCP-3017 has been redesignated as neutralized. Description. Updated. SCP-3017 was the designation for Fraser Melbrook, a male aged 27 years old at the time of his death. Subjects who made direct visual contact or engaged in conversation with Melbrook had a 1-5% chance per minute of developing SCP-3017-A. SCP-3017-A refers to a cognitohazardous effect which resulted in subjects developing a compulsion to have SCP-3017 in their custody. Subjects affected by SCP-3017-A perceived SCP-3017 as a dangerous criminal with an unusually effective ability to escape incarceration. SCP-3017-A often resulted in subjects developing an obsession with Melbrook and resisting any attempt to remove them from his vicinity. Treatment with Class A amnestics was shown to alleviate SCP-3017-A, however, Symptoms would return immediately upon subsequent exposure to SCP-3017. SCP-3017-1 was the collective designation for 12 close members of Melbrook's inner circle and two Foundation personnel who were immune to the effects of SCP-3017-A. As the effects of SCP-3017-A ceased upon Melbrook's death, the remaining living instances of SCP-3017-1 are no longer considered anomalous. SCP-3017-1-08-10 and-12 have been released back into the general population following amnestic treatment. Researcher Rylan and Security Officer Caridad, previously SCP-3017-1-13 and-14, have been reinstated into Foundation employment. Reports of Melbrook's criminal history, as well as his supposed ties to anomalous groups, are unsubstantiated. All investigations into criminal and anomalous ties have been closed. 
you have been viewing this document for 311 seconds. Please do not leave this document open for an extended period of time. If you have finished viewing this document, please close this window now. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.